Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today we're going to be making a pattern called Butterfly Blooms. Now this is one we've had a lot of requests for and I'm really excited to get started on it. Now this pattern here, it comes with three different sizes and I'm gonna make the throw today. So I need 25 Jelly Roll strips and I want nice colorful ones. So these little packs, they've got 20 each. So we'll pick out the ones we like from there. We also need some background. Now you wouldn't know this until you'd made the pattern, but the background all gets cut up into jelly roll strips also. So if you happen to have a background you like that's pre-cut, use that. And that's what I'm gonna to use today. Now our first step is to open up the packages and pick out the colors that we want. I'm not going to use all of them. So let's see what will make the quilt look the best. I do want it pretty bright and these these are nice bright colors. These happen to be ombre, so each strip goes from light to dark. So you can see it's real light here and a bit darker there. So this one may be too light, although it would work up against the black. It's just not quite as bright as I would like. So I'm gonna pick out 25 brighter strips here. Then I'm gonna open them up and get them ironed nice and flat. Now I have all the strips laid out on my cutting board and I ironed them up a little bit, especially in the middle where that fold is because we're gonna cut a patchwork piece and that fold would be in the middle of it. So if you iron it, you'll get a much more accurate cut. Now, this is not my pattern, so I can't give you all the sizes, but I've made so many cozy quilt designs and they're excellently written and the sizes are very easy to follow. So I'm gonna get all those pieces sliced up. I have the strips laid out on the board here kind of staggered so that it's not too thick in any one spot. But every strip is going to get cut exactly the same size. So this way I can cut them all at once, but I'm not cutting through very many layers at a time. Now the way that this quilt is made is with just one block. You can't really tell by looking at it. It looks a lot more complex, but there's actually just this block here and every block is going to get one of each of these different pieces that we cut, but we need to pair them up so that we get a nice colorful selection. So we need to pair up these guys here. That would be the big part there. Then we need the next two sizes, but get a different color. So let's do orange this time. Those will go for that. Then these last three pieces, those can come from over here. Why don't we do yellow for that? So we need these three guys here. So this is what we need for one block, for the colors. So I'm gonna continue picking up pieces here and making sure I get three different colors for each block. There's all the pieces with each block laid out separately. So I didn't worry too much about which color is going in each block. I just made sure I had three different colors. The next thing we need is the background. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those cut up. I've got the pieces all picked off for the first block. And before we can actually stitch it together, we need to take these longer pieces and make them pointed. So both of these longer ones and these ones here need to have something added. So let me show you how to do that. Each of these longer strips get a square added to one end. So I'm gonna line this up here and then I'm going to stitch from corner to corner. Now you can draw a line on there if you like, but it'll save a lot of time if you put a line on your sewing machine. I use this painter's tape and it's just laid out from the needle hole straight down. So if I put the tip at the needle and the other corner on the line and stitch right down there, I can avoid having to draw on each piece. So this one gets stitched like this. The next one gets stitched in the opposite direction. And now these smaller two, this one is gonna get stitched this way and this one that way. So be sure to check the pattern so you make sure you've got your orientations correct before you stitch. Now before we can move on, we're going to want to iron these toward the corner. And we're gonna to wanna to trim off these back two layers. I like to use scissors. Just leave a quarter inch seam allowance and do that with all four of these and then we can make our block. 
now we have all the parts and pieces we need for the whole block. So I'm going to lay out the whole block here next to my sewing machine. Okay, everything is laid out now. So we can go ahead and start by sewing these first two pieces together that are in the middle and then we'll put it right back in the same spot. I'm just going to finger press all the seams while I make the block. I'm not going to iron it till I'm all done. So the seam allowances are going to go towards the background here. Now we can put these two pieces onto this. So let's start with this one. And if you use a careful quarter inch seam allowance, every piece is going to fit on just exactly right. We'll do this seam allowance down. And we'll add this guy, put the seam allowance towards the bigger background piece here. Now we can add this piece here and this piece over here, but before we can add it, we need to stitch this on. Seam allowance again going toward the darker color. And now this will fit right on here. And there's only one intersection to match, and that's right here. And you can see those seam allowances are going in opposite directions, making it very easy to match them up. Now again, we can add this to the bottom and this to the top, but let's sew this seam first. So there's no other intersections to match in the whole block. We're just going to be adding this piece here, no seams to match, and this piece here, no seams to match. Now we just have this one last long piece to add and the block will be done. To iron it, just smooth it out with your hand so you can make sure you've got your seam allowances laying the way that you finger pressed them earlier. Give it a brief dry iron. Make sure everything looks nice and square. Then give it a steam pressing. And that's the whole block. So for the size I'm making, I need to make a total of 25 of these. So I'm gonna make the other 24, get those all stitched up. Now is the really fun part. We get to lay the blocks out. And now we will start to see a secondary pattern show up after we get enough of them on the table here. So I'm not going to worry at this point about what color is going where. I'm just going to lay them out in the direction that they're going to be going in. And I'm going to have to look at the pattern because otherwise I'm going to get confused. So I'm going to continue to lay these out, then we'll trade around with colors. Now you have to use your imagination a little, but you can see right here, that's a butterfly. So here's the butterfly in the quilt here. And then we've got this that looks like a flower. That's why it's called butterfly blooms. It's pretty easy to lay the blocks out. So I started here and I've got the big piece on the bottom left, then on the top left, bottom left, top left. The next row is just the opposite. It's on the bottom right, top right, bottom right, top right. And I'm going to trade the blocks around a little bit. I didn't do anything but lay them out and it looks really good, but I'll probably move these so we don't have the same green and purple that close. But I try not to get too picky about it because the quilt's gonna look good really no matter where we put the blocks. Now, when you sew them together, there's only one seam to match right here. There's only this one spot right there. So it's gonna be really fast to get them together. I'm gonna add some borders, then I'm gonna get it onto the quilting machine. I've got the quilt on the machine and lots of colors of thread would look really good for the quilting. So you could really pick almost any color. So if we do red, it's going to blend with most of them and it's going to show quite nicely on the black. I usually like my threads to blend in a little better. So here's a nice dark lavender. Now this one, it shows just a little there. It's going to show up a little there. That would be a good choice. Dark purple, again, it's fairly stark on the yellow. Doesn't show at all on the black. This one is going to show a little bit in the black and I think I will like I like that, that's good. We could go navy blue. So there's almost any of these, it's a matter of what do you like. Roll out some thread, 
put a lot of it on the quilt and see what looks best to you. I really think I'm gonna like this grayish purple, so I'm gonna go with that one. I think I found the perfect quilting pattern. It has butterflies and flowers, so it's just right for the Butterfly Blooms quilt. I don't often copy the pattern when I make my own version of a quilt, but this was so bright and cheerful, I just couldn't resist. The colors were just awesome. So I really like how these colors pop out against the black background. And because I used colored thread, that light uh, lavender for the thread quilting, it makes this look like it has texture and I think it softens the solid black. It looks really good with all those butterflies, got the little flowers. Now from the back side, I used a navy and you can really see those butterflies on the back there. The quilt turned out 66 by 66 inches square. And I mentioned before, the pattern has three different sizes all the way up to a king size. So you could make this in other colors. You could make it in these colors and put it onto your big king size bed. Now I did want to make this in another color and I have a nice bright jelly roll from Riley Blake and it's called Play Outside. So let's see what this looks like with these brighter and lighter background. So it makes a completely different looking quilt. So there's four of the blocks. Then we've got four more down here and it still makes really nice butterflies, but this is almost like a spring version of the same pattern. So you can see the big butterflies here and I just used the light prints from the jelly roll for the background and the dark prints from the jelly roll for the butterfly parts. And I think it came out very, very nice. Thanks for watching our tutorial today on how to make the butterfly blooms quilt. We hope you enjoyed it. Now, one more thing, we've got a giveaway. This is a batik quilt I made called Island Dreaming. Nice and bright, but with an almost white background. It's about 60 inches square. Very fun. It's winter right now, but it's going to be spring soon, and then we can use this for a nice picnic blanket. Now, it's very easy to enter the giveaways. All you do is go to the link below that says giveaway, and then enter your email address and your name. And remember, we can send this anywhere in the world. Good luck. Now, if you like our tutorials and you want to help support us, the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. That would really help us out. Happy quilting.